This is the song, la 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 la, intro song. La 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 la, la 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 la, intro song. This is the intro to the video. I hope you like it very much. It's the intro song. Thank you very much. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing this look here. It is a peacock princess inspired eye. Obviously these eyes were inspired by the colors of a peacock and I love the way it came out. It was kind of a bit of work to get there but I'm so stoked with the way it turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I love the gradient from gold to green to blue. Um, if you want to see how I did this look then please keep on watching. Also my windows are open right now so if you can hear noises from outside I'm sorry. Um, there is construction always happening in the daytime in my area and Hopefully you can just hear birds instead um, because I can hear some birds, but if you can't hear anything, that's fine too. I'm just trying to squeeze out the laughs. I think this is like the last use I have out of this. This is my Rimmel Stay Matte Primer and I'm just really, I reckon, let's use it up today. Okay, wait. the Beauty Blender does kind of absorb some of it. Okay, there was more in there than I thought and I've squeezed it all out of my Beauty Blender now and I have a horrendous amount of primer on my Beauty Blender. But there we go, I finally used it up. It's an achievement. I've had this primer forever. And it's finally all gone, but look how much I squeezed out on my Beauty Blender. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to really intensely prime my whole face. Um, cool. Good luck to me. This is ridiculous. Don't use this much primer. It's not what you're supposed to do. It's not a good idea. It's literally not even going to help my makeup stick. It might even be too much primer and make it all peel off and look disgusting. Who knows? We'll find out. So yeah, this primer, I've just had it for ages. I was excited to use it up. I'm sick of it. It's not a bad primer per se, but I don't really even make it anymore. Like, that's how long I've had it. And um, it wasn't a life-changing primer either. Like, I didn't, like, every time I applied the primer, be like, Oh my goodness, yes! My skin is so smooth and my face is so set and flawless and poreless and perfect. Like... It wasn't even like an incredible life-changing primer so I'm glad to see it finished up because it means that I can try new and exciting things I haven't found a primer that's changed my life yet and I kind of would like to because some people have primers that they swear by and I would like to be in that place it seems like a fun place in your makeup life to be I'm just not there yet because I've been using primers up that haven't changed my life Anyway, that's um, my horrendous amount of primer done. Let's get into some foundation. Today I'm using the Rimmel Lasting Matte um, Full Coverage Mattifying Foundation in the shade 103 True Ivory. And I'm just going to use this primered up Beauty Blender to apply it as well. Um, my Beauty Blender feels very smooth now, not going to lie. Maybe the primer did make a difference. I don't know. I'm just going to use that much because I've covered my face in primer. This probably will go a long way now with this foundation. This foundation's very full coverage, it's creamy, it's actually quite easy to blend. I really like blending it in with Beauty Blender. Not my favourite foundation though, as I say all the time, it's just not my favourite from Rimmel. I feel like Rimmel has better foundations. My favourite like foundations from Rimmel are probably their um, Match Perfection range with the blue lid. Just because, I don't know, it's just like an easy everyday foundation that you can build up or sheer out to like whatever you want. And I also really like the Rimmel... Um, Lasting Radiance line with the orange lid, but the thing is with the Lasting Radiance line, like I'd wear it every day if I wanted to, but like the thing is it kind of runs a little darker. So like usually I'm the shade 100 or 103 in Rimmel um, foundations like Ivory or True Ivory. But the shade True Ivory in um, the um, Lasting Radiance range isn't the same colour as the rest of the True Ivories. Like this foundation and the uh, Match Perfection, the shade True Ivory is pretty consistent across all those different lines but then randomly for the lasting radiance line it's really dark like it's not horrendously dark it's just like my summer shade dark which is it's there's a difference um so i'm just putting on the matching concealer this is the rimmel lasting matte soft matte concealer full coverage um yeah this is also like the concealer that matches um it isn't a life-changing concealer but um because it's the concealer that comes with it. I wanted to try both the foundation and the concealer, so I bought them both together. Um, but it's not my favourite concealer from Rimmel either. Again, I like the lasting... Um, not lasting. I like the um, 
what's it called, the Match Perfection Concealer from Rimmel, I think is my favourite because it's just like in a cool little squeezy tube. Um, I feel like it melts into the skin best and um, it's the one I enjoy the most. But I don't dislike the other concealers. Like this isn't necessarily a bad concealer, it's just like I think they make better ones. Is that a little bit of redness? Did I even blend this properly? Wait, I need to look in the mirror instead of looking in the viewfinder. Yeah, I have not blended this at all. There are like lines all over my face. It's ridiculous. That was, um, that was a joke. I hope you laugh because I'm kind of laughing at myself right now. Okay, that's, that's better now. We've, we've fixed up the problem. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. Let's powder the face. I'm going to be using the, um, Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the shade 10 Fair Ivory. Um, it's just like a loose finishing powder in this kind of like little sieve pot kind of packaging. Um, I'm looking for a brush to powder my face and I'm going to use this powder brush from Nude by Nature. I'm going to powder mainly under the eyes just because obviously I'd like to set the concealer. Um, this foundation that I'm wearing is actually a matte one, you know, it's the lasting matte. It is lasting in a matte finish, um, but I just like to powder my whole face anyway just because I feel like it makes makeup last, I like the way it looks. Okay, if you can hear the stuff outside, which I doubt you can, I really hope you can't hear the old construction, it's like a clang clang kind of noise. To me it always just sounds like they're dropping chains, I don't know what they're actually doing, like I'm not a construction worker, I don't live the construction worker life, but it just sounds like they're dropping chains all the time. Or like banging, I'm not sure what they're up to. I hope they're having a good day and it's not too sunny and they're wearing their sunscreen and they're having fun in the sun as I get the job done. Anyway, that is powder done. I just like kind of set it everywhere, focusing on obviously under the eyes because that's where like I don't want like creasing and stuff. But I also did the sides of my face just so that everything's like set and like powdered and done. Okay, let's go into some bronzer. I'm going to be using, ooh, let's use the last of, this is like a sad episode. Let's use the last of my Too Faced Cocoa Contour. There is like a little bit left of Medium Cocoa, my favourite contour shade. It's like not an intense contour shade, it's just like a little bit of a sculpt. I'm going to scratch it out from the corner of the pan because my brush will not fit in that little corner there. And this is the last time I'll be using this palette. It's a tragedy. It's actually very sad because I, I think this was the first high-end product that I ever bought for myself. Um, and I've loved it for many years now. Um, but it's time has come. I use it. I love it. I'm not going to like save it and never use it. Um, and I guess this will be its last use. There is one shade that you can probably tell in this palette I have not touched or have barely touched and it's the shade called Pop of Light. Um, what did I just do that for? Am I kidding? Anyway, whatever. We're just gonna have to blend that. Um, I don't know why I did that. I literally wasn't looking. I was just looking at the palette and like being sad about it. Um, the shade over here, Pop of Light, I've barely touched and these are like now all gone. The reason is Pop of Light, it just never was a shade that I could get with. It was like a little bit too shimmery so I couldn't really set under the eyes with it because all the rest of the shades in this palette are matte and so they were good for like bronzing or like sculpting or whatever. But the shade Pop of Light, it has shimmer through it so you can't really use it as like a, there's like powder all over this palette. Um, you can't really use it to like set anywhere because there's shimmer but it wasn't enough shimmer for it to be like a good highlight shade and so it was just like never a shade that I could get behind because I can't highlight with it because it's not like nice enough to like, it's not shiny enough to highlight, it's got like micro glitters through it rather than like actually being like a wet looking sheen. But then I couldn't like set under the eyes with it because it had shimmer in it and who wants like a glittery under eye? Maybe you do, I'm not judging, but it's personally not for me. And so it's never a shade that I could get use out of. It's kind of sad because there's this whole shade in the palette that I never enjoyed. And I panned the whole palette except for this single shade there. Aww. That's like, I'm just trying to get any loose powder out of the sides of there, any bronzer left. Um, it's kind of sad to see this whole palette empty. I've had so many good times with it. I remember um, why I wore this to my U10 formal and I felt so beautiful when I was wearing this palette. I remember like sculpting my face and like trying to like bronze my face for the first time, stepping back and just being like, Wow, I love makeup, this is so fun. I felt so pretty. It was like taking the time to do my makeup, getting excited for the special night ahead of my year 10 formal. I don't know, I was so excited. It was such like a nice time. Aw, good vibe palette. I've had so many fun memories. You'll probably be seeing this in an upcoming Makeup Empties video because I will feature this in my mid-yearly empties. 
it's had a fun life with me. So much love. Okay, that was like a emotional start. Um, let's go and use some blush. I'm choosing which blush to use. I'm stuck between two MAC blushes and I'm just going to compare the meerkats and think about the look I'm about to achieve. Mm. I think I'm going to go for the more neutral one just because, I don't know, I don't want to add too much when I want to focus on the eyes for this look. I've lost the brush that I just powdered my face with. Oh, here it is. Like, I'm just going to use this powder brush that I just, like, powdered my face with. Um, the same Nude by Nature brush. And I'm going to be popping Desert Rose on the cheeks. Desert Rose is a really pretty, kind of more neutrally -er, pinky mauve shade. I hope that's a good description. It's a really popular one. And it's just in their um, the powder blush formula. Um, and I'm going to really pack this on. Because although I said the tension's on the eyes, I like to over blush. Because I'm crazy for blush. And so I'm just going to go for it. Um really digging in there. I like using a larger brush when applying um, MAC highlighters, not highlighters, when I'm applying MAC blushes just because I like the way they apply to the skin better. I used to use precise blushes when applying my brush, precise brushes when applying my blushes, um, but just the way these like MAC formulas work, I just kind of prefer a fluffier brush. Just personal preference. Um, I'm also doing, of course, across the front of the nose here. I just feel like it looks cute. And of course, I'm going to go on the forehead as well. Good. Um, oh, I kind of wish I'd contoured my nose a little bit. I don't have any of that powder left of my bronzer to contour my nose. It's kind of sad. Um, I'm looking for a shade to contour my nose with. Let's just go in with this random brush here and I'll use a random bronzer that's probably way too warm toned. I would usually not use this to contour my nose, but we're just going to do it today. This is um, from Urban Decay. This is the Beaked Bronzer in the shade Bronzed. And I'm just going to use this shading brush from Real Techniques and kind of trace down the sides of the nose. Just not like contouring a lot, just like giving a little definition and shape. Um, this is like a clean brush. I'm just taking down the intensity of the blush there because I put on a bit too much. Okay, I feel a little better about that. It looks kind of intense right now, but when I put some highlight on my nose later, it won't look as intense. Also, I do like a blushed nose. I think it's a cute look. So I'm going to also take this bronzer shade, which... Why did I do that? I'm, I'm, I'm just going for it today, and it's not times that I need to be going for it. We can just chill out and not... Make mistakes like that. When you make a mistake, just blend. It's not a big deal. It's it's just makeup. It's going to go away. If you hate it, you can always just wipe your face off and start again. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to start from scratch. I'm going to keep rooting for this look. Also, I'm wearing the last of my um, Cocoa Contour Powder. So, you know, I don't want to waste my last use of it. I'm just using this same brush and same bronzer. And I'm really trying to pack it on the lid um, to create a, like, sculpted crease. Um, I just want to like deepen up the crease area before I go in for the fun colours. So I'm just really packing it on as much as I can. I'm trying to build up some intensity. I'm taking this almost to the brow bone. Like I'm taking it actually quite high up here. Um, just because I'm expecting this eye look to go really high as well. And so I want it to be like bronzed into the rest of like my bronzer out here. Like that lift. I hope that made sense. Okay, let's go in with some exciting eyeshadows now. Um, today, obviously, I'm going to be doing a peacock look. You've already seen the intro where I was probably wearing this look. How exciting. Tell me, how does the future look? Do I fail this? I hope not. Anyway, um, I'm just going to be using this shade Mermaid, which is a little duo from Dose of Colours. I think it's a duo. There's a little, like, um, cream pot in there, and then underneath there's a loose shimmer, which is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see that. It's like an emerald green. It's absolutely stunning. This is one of my nicest eyeshadows. It's a single. I'm going to grab this kind of flat packing brush. Where is it? This one. This is called a smudge brush from Real Techniques. It just looks like this. It's kind of got a dense thing there. And I'm just going to grab the cream product and directly work it over the eye. Now, I'm going to not be so precise with this. I'm just going to put it in the shape that I want this eye look to be, and then I'm going to get another brush in a sec to like blend this. This is going to be kind of a, like this is going to act as a primer um, to like prime the eyes for the colours that I'm adding on top. Um, so I'm not like too stressed about this being perfect, because um, it's more just to give a base primer for the other colours to stick to. Um, let's just work it in to my mobile lid, and I want to take it obviously higher than my mobile lid today, just so that 
you know, intensify the look. So I'm going to bring it up and up and up and up until it is no more. Let's put a little bit more on. Okay. I wonder what blush... Brush. Blush, brush. Oh, I'm really getting confused. I'm going to choose this brush to blend with. This is from Nude by Nature and it's called a crease brush. And I'm just going to take it clean and blend. So that this cream shade blends into that bronzy shade that I added earlier. Just straight up there into the crease. And when I want more product, like I want to make this taller, I'll just add it with this smudge brush from Real Techniques and then I'll blend it up and out using the New by Nature brush. So popping it on and then blending it out. Okay, I'm going to do the other eye and finish this up off camera and then come back when I've got all like the priming base layer on. Okay, so I've blended this over the eyes and it looks so beautiful. It's like a wet look on the lid. It's so shimmery and beautiful. Honestly, you could just leave it at this and be done and it would be so pretty. Or you could even just grab the um, loose mermaid shade underneath and just tap that over the top and be so stunning. I love this. It's such a beautiful and pigmented product. The shade is stunning. But... We're going to keep going. This is not all done yet. I'm going to actually take some colors from the BH Cosmetics Take Me to Brazil palette. It's a fun rainbow palette with all the colors of the rainbow. Obviously, here it is. And I'm actually going to spice up the lid a bit. So I'm going to go from lightest shades to darkest shades. So I'm going to grab this light green here. This is the top neon kind of light green. And this brush from Nude by Nature is called the Tapered Blending Brush. I'm just going to grab this and pat this over the inner corner, like the inner third of the eye. Now I'm not like desperate to build up the intensity of this. I just want a, a little bit of a light greenness here. And because I've already blended the primer earlier, um, this will show up as like an ombre color. Like it looks more intense down here and it's already ombre up for me. I feel like most of the blending work is done. It's, it's so easy. Um, so I'm just going to pack this on the center here um, of the front of the lid, about the front third. I'm just blending it up, focusing most of the pigment down here and trying to like take less pigment up there, but it's already like ombre blended. So like that looks pretty fine to me. Um, next I'm going to take in a deeper green shade and the shade I'm going to use is this, I don't know what to call this. It's like a blue toned green. It's very pretty. I'm going to grab the same brush um, and then pat that over the center of the lid. As you can see, just by using the same brush, I'm able to pick up um, lighter shades than darker shades. And by doing that, um, it's easy to like not use as many brushes up because um, I'm working in order of like what color the brushes are, if that makes sense. I don't know. Probably doesn't. I'm going in now with this deep, actually let's use this shade too. This like medium darker blue shade. I'm going to go in with that. Um, on like the outer, the, the second half of the lid, not the outer crease yet, just like in the middle here. Um, but yeah, by working from lightest to darkest, um, you can use the same brush for everything. I'm not blending this as much. I'm just kind of packing these shades on because I'm going to blend later in a bit um, to add like, you know, a more seamless finish. Um, so right now I'm just like packing the colors on. Also, I really like how these shades are all melting together. That's why I chose to use that like um, that shade before going straight in for the darkest shade. This darkest shade I'm using is like a navy blue down here. Um, and I'm just going to grab the same brush and pack that over the outer part of the eye. Oh, they blend together so nicely. Yay. I love the way this is turning out. They're already melting together. Like I haven't even like blended them yet and I'm getting the vibes. Um, okay. Let's choose a blending brush today. I'm going to go for this tall kind of brush from Real Techniques and I'm going to start blending from the front. So I'm going to blend it into the crease first, then I'm going to blend the two green shades together. And right now I can still pick up color on the brush because it's not like completely dark yet. So like right now I feel like I would like a little bit more of that mid-tone green here. I can grab a little bit on this brush and pop that here because it isn't mixing it too, too much. I just want to bring it in a little bit more to blend. Okay, I'm going to blend up here so that this blends into the eye more seamlessly. And then I'm going to blend the blues together. So blending the blue into that green in the center there. Let's grab a little bit more of the blue. So it... yeah, I'm loving the way this is coming out. They're melting together so nicely. 
and then blending this into the rest of the skin up there and then now I'm blending that two blue shades out in the outer corner together. I feel like I want to deepen up this eye a little bit more so I'm going to take a little bit more out here and I feel like this eye goes up a little bit more and this one doesn't go as up as much. I'm just going to try and lift this eye a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness, I love the way this is coming out. So happy. Um, wow, I love peacock colours. They're just so stunning to me. I just think it's... Peacocks are so beautiful. I think albino peacocks are really pretty too. Um, I just think peacocks are like really beautiful little creatures. And some of my favourite birds, to be honest. I'm going to take a little bit of this on the lower lash line and just mirror of go going on on the top. Just because I feel like it's a little top heavy right now. You probably feel that way too. Don't worry guys. I'm going to... Take a little bit of that cream shadow on my lower lash line, just connecting it to the top there. I'm not going to go too heavy on the lower lash line, just taking this to like the middle, like right below the pupil there. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, just connecting it to the upper lash line and dragging it just to under the pupil. Cool. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to mirror what I've got going on on the top, but really carefully. I'm actually going to start from the darkest shade and work my way in just because I don't mind the lower lash line being a little darker. So I'm grabbing that little, um, what's it called? Is it pointed or tapered blending brush? I'm grabbing that darkest navy shade, just taking that underneath the, for the first part, then taking that mid-tone blue shade, this one, sweeping that under. Oh my gosh, this is coming together exactly how I was hoping it would. And then I'm just going to take that darker green shade that we used out of the two greens and keep that a little under there. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to take that lightest green into the front underneath where we put that lightest green earlier because I want the whole front to actually be bright from the inner corner color that we use. So today for inner corner highlight, I want to use this golden shade because I feel like there's like kind of a golden aspect to peacocks. I mean, that sounds bizarre, but like they have like a sheen. Their feathers aren't like matte. There's like an iridescence. There's a sheen. There's a shine. They're beautiful. Um, so I'm just going to dampen this. What's this called? Like a kind of like a flat concealery detailer brush from Real Techniques. And I'm going to grab this shade from MAC, which is Whisper of Guilt. And I'm going to pack this all over the inner corner and also bring it underneath the front of the lash line. So this is going to blend really nicely into that green shade. So it goes from gold to green. And then I'm also going to take this under the lower lash line and connect it to the green underneath here. And they're going to mix together and make like a green gold underneath there. Does that make sense? It's so pretty. Wow. I love peacock colors. I'm like going on this whole time about just like how much I love peacock colors. I think Peacocks are just so beautiful and the colours they have, stunning. Whoever designed those, a genius. Um, and then I'm just going to drag this under the front of the lower lash line and connect it to the colours that we used on the lower lash line. Okay, I kind of want to do a little bit more blending just to make sure everything is melting into the way that I want it to look. So I'm just going to grab the brush that we used earlier, this little like shader brush. All this has on it is like a little bit of um, the Urban Decay Beach Bronzer. Oh, powder in my eye. And I'm just going to blend from the front because obviously this is where the least amount of colour is. It's lightest here. I'm just going to blend, blend, blend. Blend out here and then go under a little bit. This eye is like a little bit better blended. This eye needs a bit of help on the side here. Yeah, it's a bit better there. And then blend underneath kind of melting them all together. Oh my gosh, I love the way this is coming out. I'm so happy. Makeup's so fun. Okay, I feel like that's really pretty. Um, I love the way this is looking. I'm going to go a bit because my dog's woofing her head off. I'm just going to put on some um, liner, some lashes, some brows, and I'll come back and we'll highlight my whole face together. So I'll see you when I have liner and lashes on. Toodaloo! Okay, so I'm back with some lashes, some liner, and some brows. By the way, I just wanted to show you that my liner was actually not black. It's actually a dark navy shade. It's the Kat Von D ink liner in the shade Bao Dulaire. It just looks like this. 
This is Bao Dulé. It's not going to focus. But um, this is a felt tip liner and it's not my favourite, to be honest. It was kind of difficult to make this wing, but we worked for it. We got there in the end. The lashes I'm wearing are actually the last pair of my princess lashes that I've been wearing on this channel for ages. I've finally used up the whole packet. There's probably a couple um, of the pairs still floating around in my life. But um, yeah, once I use it, I use them till I lose it. So yeah, once all those pairs are lost, that is the end of this packet. Um, so yeah, I feel like this is like a big empties video because I also um, used up the last of my ColourPop Precision Brow Pencil to fill in my brows. I've been winding this up for ages. You saw me wind up the last wind and there is literally no more product that I can get out of this. Um, so yeah, that was the last use out of this brow pencil as well. So many empties in this video. It's like a surprise empties video. Um, but let's highlight the face. I'm going to be using the MAC um, Whisper of Gil Extra Dimension Skin Finish and this brush from Mecca that I got for my birthday like two or three years ago now. I think it was two years ago. And I'm just going to pop this on the cheekbones first. Um, I went for this gold highlight on my like inner corner and on my um, as my highlight today because I feel like although, you know, blues and greens are like cooler tone colours, I wanted this to be a warm tone look. First of all, because my hair is literally orange and untoned right now. But also because, I don't know, just like there's a goldness to a peacock. The duochromeness isn't like a cool tone duochrome to me. It's like a golden duochrome. So I thought I should match the golden vibes in my mind of a peacock. And we're going golden today. Um, I'm really trying to build this up because it's really difficult to get out of the pan because the pan is like these tiny little squares. Maybe I should scratch it off instead. Um, yeah, this highlight is like... It's hit pan, but it's not a pan. So I've hit grid. And so it's difficult to use um, the highlight that's stuck in between the grids. Um, this brush is really nice and soft. I really like the Mecca Cosmetica brushes. I wouldn't mind getting a couple more. It also matches my Real Techniques brushes, which I like when things match. Um, I'm also going to take a bit on the... What's this called? Like the forehead above my brow bone. I just love the way this looks. It is so like metallic and... Um, perfect in my opinion and I like connect them even like making a big C on the top half of my face the more highlight the better you know go crazy when I put on the highlight you can see that it's kind of taken down the intensity of the blush that I'm wearing because um, now my whole face is just highlight instead of being a whole face of blush um, let's use this little brush here this is the Real Techniques number 201 it's a little um, kind of tapered blending brush I'm gonna grab this highlight and put it on my brow bone really carefully because I don't want to mess up my eyeshadow or my brows that I've popped on and then I'm just doing the same on the other side. By the way, the lashes I'm wearing are just some flared lashes that I bought for cheap. This whole thing was like $10, $20 in Taiwan. It was really affordable. It was like 25 max. It was really worth it. I really like getting lashes in Taiwan. I just feel like it's more affordable um, than like if I was to get them from a drugstore here in Australia. Um, but I do buy lashes from the drugstore here in Australia just because... They sell different ones. I'm just highlighting down the center of my nose. Kind of takes down the intensity of the blush on my nose. And also, I think it makes my nose look nice and straight. You see what I mean? And I put a lot on the tip and on this part here just because those are the parts I, I don't know, I just accentuate them. I do my Cupid's bow for literally no reason. And that is all my highlighting done. Um, yeah, so now I've got all my golden highlighter on. I'm going to moisturize my lips with the Burt's Bees Hydrating um, Coconut and Pear Lip Balm with the white lid. And I'm gonna pop on some liquid lipstick that's nude to go with the look. I could have gone for a crazy lip, like I really could have with this like intense eye, but I wanted the focus to be on the eyes. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go in with this lip. Um, where is a mirror? Oh, there's a mirror. Um, I should just get a handheld mirror, but you know. Um, this liquid lipstick is from Dose of Colors. It's one of my favorites in the shade Supernatural. It's a perfect beigey warm tone nude um, on my skin tone. I'm absolutely obsessed with it and I love it. I've worn this so many times. Like, this is... I'm surprised there's still product left in the tube considering how many times I've worn this liquid lipstick. It's so full coverage. There are some kids screaming on the street. That's okay. I hope they're having fun. Um, it has like a moussey, sweet kind of scent as well. It's so delicious. The consistency isn't as like liquidy. It's more like a creamy mousse. Um, and see how it's warm tone? I feel like it goes with like the vibes of my hair and like my whole warm tone vibes. But yeah, this is the completed look. I hope you enjoyed it because I really did. I have so much fun today and I feel really cute right now. It's really fun and colourful. If you did like this look, please give it a big thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. There's a little red subscribe button down the bottom somewhere it's free don't worry about it you can also hit the bell if you want to be notified every time i upload and i upload all the time so you'll be like bing 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 
You can also comment below anything you'd like to see me do in the future. Just let me know and I'll get on it. And hopefully I'll see you in one of my future videos very soon. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace. This is the song, la 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 la, outro song. La 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 la, la 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 la, outro song. Oma wrote the music, Emily wrote the words. It's the outro song. Thank you for watching, guys. Love you very much. And I'll catch you next time. Toodaloo. Love you so much. Bye, 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 bye.